Do you miss the thrill and cheekiness of classic James Bond movies? The kooky villain, the gadgets, the cheap one-liners that will forever be ingrained into your memory? Well, now you can scratch that itch with 2015's Kingsman – The Secret Service. Spoiler alert! While I might be giving you my opinion on the film, that's no substitute for watching it for yourself. Links to the film are in the description. We open up on Harry and his unit, as they try to extract information from a prisoner of war. But things go horribly wrong when it turns out that the man's pulled the pin on a grenade. After realizing this, one of Harry's soldiers throws himself on the man and shields the other from the blast. When Harry realizes that he missed the detail of the grenade, he apologizes to Merlin, who trained the dead man and Lancelot, who's congratulated for making it through training. Soon after, back in London, Harry goes to visit the dead man's wife and son, and he tries to comfort her by assuring her that he died as a hero to his country. She doesn't take much comfort in that, and Harry gives a medal to the boy, Eggsy, who he lets know the secret code. And with that, we flash forward to the present. And before a bunch of you question who you're seeing now, yeah, that's Mark Hamill. Dr. Arnold's been kidnapped, and he's being held in a mountain home. The kidnapper assures him that his employer will be there soon, but in the meantime, a knock comes from the door. When he answers it, it's Lancelot, who puts an end to all of the assailants. Well, I guess after seeing this scene, Lancelot is definitely the assailant. These guys weren't even doing anything too bad, then Lancelot comes barging in, shooting off fingers and drinking their alcohol. He definitely seems like the assailant here. Suddenly, another knock comes at the door, and he heads over to see who's here. He's cut short by Gazelle, who literally cuts him in half. And I don't mean the usual way. She slices straight down with these awesome, bouncy blade feet. If I ever had to have prosthetic feet, these are what I'd want. She goes to answer the door after covering the bodies, and we see none other than Samuel L. Jackson who plays Valentine. After Valentine assures Dr. Arnold that he's going to find out who Lancelot worked for, we cut to London where Harry's at the main shop for a meeting with Arthur and other knights. Arthur lets them know that they're going to start a selection process for Lancelot's replacement. Then we cut to Eggsy, who's heading out of the apartment where his mother and her deadbeat boyfriend are doing their thing. Eggsy was destined for a broken childhood from the start, and his mom obviously took a rougher path than intended. I guess you could say that Eggsy was a product of his upbringing, but he still doesn't do too bad. I mean, yeah, he ends up stealing a car and getting arrested, but he does have a good moral compass. When Eggsy gets his phone call, he remembers the medal Harry gave him as a kid, and he uses the secret code with the operator. Within seconds, he's set free, and Harry's waiting for him outside. The two of them head to the bar where Harry shows how much he really knows about Eggsy. But they're interrupted by the people who owned the car Eggsy stole. Manners maketh man. Anybody that knows this series knows that this quote is pretty much the calling card for the film. Harry immediately follows this up with one of the best, fast-paced fight scenes with the cool James Bond gadgets. The gadget's his umbrella. I, I want that umbrella too. After seeing that Harry's something elite, he follows Harry back to the Kingsman shop where he takes an underground tube to the Kingsman mansion. Here, Eggsy realizes that he's Harry's choice as a recruit for the position of Lancelot. He also finds out that his father wasn't just another soldier, he was one of them. After meeting the other recruits, it becomes clear that Eggsy's the only one from his social standing to be selected. But that doesn't stop him. Eggsy does find one friend among the others. Roxanne assures him that everything's going to be just fine. Meanwhile, Valentine's having a meeting with the President of the United States, and he's actually making a lot of sense. He's one of those villains that you agree with his reasoning behind the plan, but not necessarily his means to the end. And if you actually agree with how he's doing things, you don't admit it out loud. What other villain made a lot of sense that you almost ended up rooting for? Back at training, the recruits are sleeping soundly when the room quickly floods with water. As they wake up, they realize that they have to find a way out. And all of the Ivory Tower recruits head to the bathroom, where they make snorkels out of the shower heads and toilets. Eggsy, on the other hand, decides to try and find a way out. After checking the door, he swims past everyone to the mirror on the wall. After realizing something, he starts to punch the mirror. And soon, they all come pouring into the room that Merlin's observing them from. They're all happy to make it through this part of the training, but one of them didn't make it. One of the girls ended up drowning since no one made sure to check on her. Elsewhere, Harry goes to the school where Dr. Arnold teaches, and he asks him all sorts of questions before Arnold's head blows up. We find out that Valentine actually had an implant put into Arnold's head to monitor and control how to keep his secret. Back at training, everyone's surprised to go from drowning in bed at night to picking a puppy to keep. 
Eggsy ends up picking a pug, but he actually thought that it was a bulldog. Honest mistake, right? As he continues his training with his pug, JB, Valentine has sped up production of his chips, and Harry's in a coma thanks to the explosion at Arnold's lecture hall. Eggsy still has problems with the other guys in the recruitment, but he still has Roxanne who stands by his side. After their final written test and shooting session, the recruits move on to their final test. Meanwhile, Valentine's actually hosting a dinner for the Prime Minister and Princess of a foreign country, as he tries to bring them into the fold of his genius plan. While the Prime Minister is on board, the Princess ends up being taken away by Gazelle. Her guards try to stop Gazelle, but they're no match for her. Look at her. She's like a hotter, better oddball henchman. I love it. And I want those feet. Back at the mansion, Harry asks for Eggsy to visit him since he's awake and Merlin comes in to go over some intel he found from Harry's encounter with Arnold. After Merlin tells them that he traced the chip to the Valentine Corporation, Eggsy plays the footage of Valentine's interview from earlier that day. Valentine announces that he's giving away free phones and SIM cards with free service. Once Harry notices that Valentine's assistant has the same surgical scar from the implant, he has Merlin set up an alias that can get him a meeting with Valentine. Later, Eggsy goes to another part of his final training and we find out that they all have to jump out of a plane. Easy enough. Yeah, except they find out that one of them doesn't have a parachute in their bag after they've already jumped. That's a worst nightmare for sure. Eggsy comes up with a plan to keep them all alive, and in the end, Eggsy, Roxanne, and Charlie are the only ones that make it. Merlin also shows off the kind of cheeky buggery is after showing Eggsy that they all actually had parachutes. After that nightmare, Harry goes to dinner at Valentine's, and he ends up giving away his cover. Valentine plays along, but he knows that this is someone that will lead him to the organization he's been waiting to find. Afterwards, Valentine's SIM cards are being handed out all over the world, and over a billion of them have been distributed. Back at the mansion, the three remaining candidates find out that they have to go to a party to seduce a woman. After all three of them shoot their shot, they end up getting drugged by the bartender, and Eggsy wakes up tied to train tracks with the bartender standing over him. Soon, the train can be heard pulling up and the bartender asks Eggsy to give up information about Kingsman. Eggsy keeps his mouth shut, and it turns out that it was all a part of the training. I would have soiled myself for sure. Screw that hole that the rails go in. That's not enough security for me. Then Harry asks Eggsy if he wants to watch Charlie go, and he says sure. I would have needed a moment to take care of myself before anything else. Of course, Charlie blabs without hesitation, so now it's just Eggsy and Roxanne. Harry takes Eggsy back to his house where he shows him newspapers that showed anything other than the missions he had accomplished. Then Harry takes him to the Kingsman shop where they go for a fitting. Eggsy finds the secret gadget room, and he finds all of the secret things built into the everyday gadgets. When they go to the other fitting room for Eggsy's suit, they find out that Valentine has actually come all the way to the shop thanks to the tracking gel that Harry ingested. Later, Eggsy goes to Arthur's office where he's told to shoot JB. Out of all the tests they've had to do, this is the one that I wasn't really sure that I could do. Jump out of a plane? No problem. Get roofied and tied to train tracks? Yeah, I'll deal with it. Shoot my dog? You're a monster. Eggsy can hear that Roxanne completed her task, and he's sent home as he's been disqualified. Eggsy goes back home where he essentially picks up the same lifestyle as he had before this all began. But now he's got JB there with him. When his mother comes home, she's so happy to have him back but he notices that her boyfriend's been beating on her. Eggsy's had enough, and he takes the Kingsman car to the bar to confront the guy. Just when he's about to get out and end the guy, the car takes over and drives him all the way to Harry's house. Harry tells him how disappointed he is in him. He tells him that the rounds were blank, and the girl that drowned in the beginning was actually a tech from their German department. After Harry hears about Valentine conducting a test at a racist church in Kentucky, he heads to the States to see what's happening. Now, remember how I said the fight in the bar was one of my favorite fight scenes? Well, this church scene is my absolute favorite fight scene. And the best use of Freebird that I've ever seen. I dare you to find a better high-paced fight. The second Valentine starts the test, we hear a frequency that sends everyone into a murderous frenzy. Harry stabs people with a Bible, sets people's faces on fire as he uses them as a human shield, and he crunches someone up like a human accordion after shoving a lighter grenade in his pocket. It's intense and I'll never stop turning up the volume for this entire scene. I'm totally ready to fight someone now. After Harry's the only one left in the entire church, he heads out to find Valentine and Gazelle waiting for him. Valentine explains that his SIM cards send out a frequency that just triggers aggression and takes away inhibitors. Then he shoots Harry in the head. 
This is the perfect response from someone that's preparing to let the entire world kill itself. Then you have Gazelle over here who has no problem slicing and dicing everyone in the way. After watching through Harry's glasses, Merlin and Arthur assemble the Kingsmen, and Eggsy decides to go to the headquarters where he sits down with Arthur. Eggsy tries to find out what Arthur's going to do about Valentine, and Arthur assures him that the intel's been passed on to the proper authorities. He offers Eggsy a toast, but Eggsy notices a scar behind Arthur's ear that's the same as those with Valentine's chip. After Arthur shows that he just slipped Eggsy a poison in his drink, he tries to give Eggsy a chance to see eye to eye with him. He explains Valentine's reasoning, and it's all because he sees global warming as Earth's way of getting rid of a virus, us. Valentine believes that reducing the population drastically is the only way to save as much of the planet and mankind as possible. Again, I agree with his view, but not a solution. Even if I did, I definitely wouldn't be saying anything. Valentine's what happens when someone with all the money in the world decides to take matters into his own hands. After finding out that Eggsy doesn't agree with his view, Arthur sets off the poison. But Eggsy proves that his sleight of hand has come in handy. After Arthur dies, Eggsy cuts out the implant and takes it to Merlin. Now that Merlin, Roxanne, and Eggsy are all on the same side, they prepare to deal with this doomsday event on their own. They set off in the Kingsman jet, and they find out Merlin's plan. He plans to have Roxanne fly up to space to destroy one of Valentine's satellites to buy them some time, and Eggsy is going straight into the lion's den. We see that most of the people that are part of Valentine's supporters are making their way to his safety bunker, and they head there using Arthur's credentials. Eggsy plays the perfect gentleman, and Merlin stays with the plane to handle the intelligence and surveillance on board. Eggsy orders a martini here, and I half expected him to say the shaken, not stirred bit, but that didn't happen. I guess that'd be too much. They might even have copyrighted it at this point. After Eggsy gets Merlin connected to the network, Charlie shows up and holds a knife to Eggsy's throat. After revealing him to Valentine, Charlie gets knocked out by Eggsy who takes off to the hangar. Valentine recognizes him and dispatches guards to take him down. You've seen the fight scene so far though. You really think that 60 guards are enough to take down Eggsy? 60 racists in a Kentucky church couldn't take down Harry. I think Eggsy will be just fine considering they had the same training. Roxanne takes down the missile before falling back to Earth, and Eggsy makes it to the plane. After finding out that Merlin can't completely override the system, Eggsy gets armed before heading back in to take down Valentine. Meanwhile, Valentine is piggybacking off someone else's satellite, and things should be back online soon. Once things are back online, Valentine activates the system and the world goes crazy. It's the church on a large scale. After Merlin and Eggsy get cornered, Eggsy remembers the implants, and he has Merlin set them off. This whole movie actually seems so serious, but this part put the icing on the cake as far as style. All of Valentine's supporters have their heads blown off, and they look like little confetti nuclear explosions. It's priceless. Eggsy ends up finding the kidnapped princess, and she tells him that if he saves the world, they'll get to do butt stuff. That's all the motivation Eggsy needed. He immediately grabs a rifle and makes his way to the main room where Gazelle comes down to take care of him. She's my favorite henchman. It used to be Jaws, but she's just so damn awesome. Sadly, Eggsy has to kill her, and he does it with the blade that's coated in a toxin in his shoe. Classic Bond stuff. With Gazelle out of the way, Eggsy takes one of her feet and spears Valentine through the torso. After some final words with Valentine, Eggsy grabs some champagne and heads back to the princess's cell, where he closes the door behind him. After Merlin hears a little of what's going on, he politely closes the surveillance monitors, and the credits roll. In case you didn't catch on, I'm a huge fan of the Kingsman movies. The new one just came out and I'm ecstatic to watch it. What a lot of people miss though is the credits scene that's of Eggsy handling his mother's boyfriend in the bar. It's kind of the catchphrase of the series now. Go check it out. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.